Hello and welcome back to the Sticky Art Channel. If you're new here, my name is Justin and in this video I'm going to try painting on glass for the very first time. I've recently seen a lot of other artists painting anime characters on glass with really amazing results, so I had to try it for myself. I decided to paint one of my favorite scenes from the anime Howl's Moving Castle. I quickly found out that painting on glass is not as easy as it looks. If you do plan on painting anime on glass or characters on glass, I would highly recommend watching this whole video so you can get the best results and not make the same mistakes that I did. I found to get the best results, the process as well as preparation that you use is just as important as using the correct paint and supplies. I'll put all of the supplies needed for painting on glass in the video description below. The first thing you'll want to do is clean your glass surface that you'll be painting on. You want it to be squeaky clean. I use rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. To get a clean outline, I'm using a Sharpie oil-based paint pen with an extra fine nib. I tried this with a regular alcohol-based Sharpie first, and I found that it just did not give enough coverage. It's worth investing in a paint pen to get the thick coverage and really clean lines. I ended up using two different types of paints, acrylics and enamels, and I found the enamels did a lot better at adhering to the glass. However, they both have their pros and cons, and the enamels are a lot harder to clean up if you do make a mistake. It was at this moment that he knew. He dug. To clean up any mistakes with enamel paint, you'll need a paper towel or a cotton swab nearby with a little bit of paint thinner on it. And the other downside to enamel paints is that they have some really nasty fumes that are bad for you, and you need to be in a well-ventilated area if you're using them. I do, however, recommend using a nicer paintbrush than the one that I used if you are using enamel paints, something that's meant for enamel paints. And I used a cheap watercolor paintbrush and I just couldn't get the amount of control that I needed. And it just wasn't as satisfying as it would have been with an actual nice softer paintbrush. That being said, the enamel paints are great for coverage. Most areas I only had to go over one coat. And in other areas, I did let it completely dry. I came back the next day and added another coat and there was no areas where I could see any light through. And just to clarify, I did use two different types of paints, but I did not mix the two different types of paints together. So if I did need to get different colors, I only used acrylics with acrylics when mixing them and then enamels with enamels. And when you do mix colors, you want to make sure to blend them thoroughly before applying them to the glass. This will help avoid any swirls or marble effects with the paint. I found the acrylic paints were a lot more transparent and had a harder time sticking to the glass. Even with it super clean, I had to do a lot of kind of like dabbing of the paint to get it to start to stick, let it dry a little bit and then add some more on top of it. And I just added a bunch of layers and the paint a little bit thicker. And you want to make sure that the paint at the end of the time that it dries is a little bit on the thicker side. If it is really thin, it is more likely to peel and come apart on different areas. And I found that the acrylic skin tone was one of the worst for transparency. I had to go over at least four or five times before I got a good amount of coverage. In a lot of anime styles where there's a two-tone or a cell style shading, it's important to apply the different colors and let each one dry before doing different layers. That way you don't mix the two colors or have them blend at all. I used the same approach with Sophie's hair. For the lighter part, I did make sure to do a few coats first, let them completely dry, and then I came back with the darker color. If you have a really light tone and you put a dark tone behind it, or a dark tone that you put a really light tone behind it, you still might be able to see through it when the light hits it. When I added the darker tone to the hair, I made sure not to cross over to the lighter parts. I left the edges of calcifer a little thin, that way the background will kind of show through. And then on the center part, I did add a really light yellow, that way it'll really make calcifer pop out and really glow. So 
Something to keep in mind is if you want to add a background or not. A lot of artists choose not to add a background. It's a really cool effect and it's a lot easier. You don't have to worry about adding a complex background or worry about it messing up what you've already done. That being said, I decided I wanted to add a background. I thought it would really add to the actual image, just kind of the contrast of the really clean anime image up against the kind of more impressionistic painting in the background, kind of make it pop and also give it that distance and kind of movement and also old fashioned kind of timey look to it. And the way that I did that is I just kind of added in the lights and the darks and I did use more of a wet on wet process. Other places in the painting I did recommend letting everything dry first but because I didn't really care if the paints kind of blurred together a little bit I did apply everything kind of wet and just went along with it and I do recommend if you use tape to tape anything off to take the tape off before the paint dries especially if it's acrylic. It has a tendency to kind of peel off with the tape if you do. I did wait a little bit too long in some areas, but for the most part, I was pretty good. I didn't have to clean it up at all. And if you do have the paint peel off, it is kind of a pain with acrylic because you end up having to cut out the area and repaint it or figure out a way to get it so it doesn't peel more off. Because once one area starts to peel off the glass, the whole area peels off and you kind of get a bubble. That being said, I didn't really get too many bubbles or any issues, so I think I did a good job cleaning it. As long as you clean your glass really well, you shouldn't have too many issues and also the type of paint and the quality of paint will matter so using a higher quality acrylic paint will definitely help. And one last tip or recommendation that I would have done differently is wear gloves the whole time. That way I don't have to clean the glass so much when mounting it but overall I was able to clean the glass really well again and mount it and I found this really cool floating glass frame to mount my glass painting in. Overall, I really enjoyed this project. My first impressions of glass is that it is a really interesting surface to paint on. There is a big learning curve and I hope that other people know that and know what they're getting themselves into. And you also do have to put a little bit of money into this to actually get some good results. So it's not the cheapest as far as mediums go. That being said, I definitely want to do this again and I will do another one in the future. Let me know in the comments below if there are any characters or any ideas from either video games or movies that you would like to see or think that would look cool as a glass painting. And if you do have any other questions about the process, let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe and turn on notifications for when I post my newest videos. And until next time, peace!